Welcome to the My Gift Podcast with your host, Mark Mitchell. Hello and welcome back to episode four of My Gift Podcast Series. I'm so excited after the first three weeks to really share some incredible gifts each of the guests has brought on. Today, I have another compelling story to share with you. Uh, Junior Achievement of Dallas is a passion of mine. I was uh, fortunate to be on the board of Junior Achievement for about 10 years and blessed to have a period where I served also as the chairman of the board, doing great things, not just here in Dallas, but around the globe. So today, let me welcome Jan Murfield, president of Junior Achievement Dallas to the show. So welcome, Jan. Thank you, Mark. Excited to have you here. Uh, Why don't we get started and just share a little bit about you, your background with JA Dallas, who you are, as we get started. Okay. Well, I'm the present CEO of JA Dallas, and that just means that we have a territory that we um, serve kids. We give them education information based on financial literacy, entrepreneurship, and preparing for a career. So it's kind of a territory. We also raise our own money to implement the programs. We don't receive government funding. So we fund all the education that we give to the students in Dallas. That's fantastic. And you've been in Dallas now about seven, seven and a half years? Seven and a half years, yes. So why don't you give, for those who don't know much about Junior Achievement, why don't you take it to a 30,000 foot level for a couple of minutes? Because Junior Achievement is not just in Dallas, it's not just in the United States, but it's global, right? It's global. So as a global organization, we're serving about 12 million students. And in the United States, is about four and a half million students. So we kind of report up, if you will, to the JAUSA organization. The great thing about JA is that we're global, but we're organized locally. So everywhere around the world, we have a board of directors, and the board of directors in Dallas decides what kind of education we are going to do here. So we work with community leaders. What are the uh, what are the top topics that are going on in Dallas. What do we really need to be a solution provider for? So we work with school districts. We work with community leaders to really look at what's relevant here because we want to provide that education with volunteers in the classroom that's going to be most relevant to them. No, I think that's fantastic. When I think about JA Dallas and my experience, maybe expand a little bit uh, How are you touching these kids? Uh, What grades are you in? And how are you making a difference with them? So our curriculum, JA curriculum, is K through 12. Okay. And it's all focused on starting a business, creating a budget, and learning about careers. So it's age appropriate. So in kindergarten, we talk about needs and wants. And in fifth grade, we're talking about the global marketplace. As you get into middle school and high school, there is a menu of different curriculum. And so we choose what's best for Dallas. So we talk to the various uh, independent school districts, and they tell us what's best for them. So it can really be flexible. Now, our differentiator is we've got this educational curriculum, but we recruit volunteers to come into the classroom. And when you go into the classroom and deliver the same message that they've heard from their teachers, but you, as an entrepreneur, are talking about your life because you're automatically going to bring in things about your life, it really opens eyes because they start to see, wow, I want to be like you and wear a suit. I want to have a job. I don't have to just do something that my father's doing, and that might be a great job for their father. But I want to do something different. I want to help break the cycle of poverty of where we are. No, I think that's great, because I think if I heard you correctly, 12 million students across the globe. Correct. But right here in Dallas, how does that divide by Dallas? Yeah, so we're reaching about 50,000 every year. Interestingly enough, we had demand for 54,000 last year, and we could only serve 48,000. So we have quite, quite a gap. And the reason there's a gap, first of all, it's a funding issue. It's a volunteer issue. So we really need volunteers to give a day of their time to go into the classroom to take our curriculum and teach it. We, can, we have videos that teach volunteers how to deliver the curriculum, and we really need more volunteers. No, I think 
54,000, you hit 48 to 50,000 last year. Is there a certain demographic? Like how, where does the demand come from? The school districts, how do you decide which schools that you get to go into? Right. So our board of directors has said, you know, we're raising $2.5 million. So we want to make, we want to put our money where we can make the greatest impact. And so we have decided that we're going to go into those school districts that have a high percent of Title I schools. And Title I simply means that that school or that child qualifies for free or reduced lunch. So in the Dallas ISD, that's about 92% of their students. So Dallas ISD provides breakfast and lunch for all of their students. Okay. And so we want to go into those schools because we know that when we go in and take volunteers into those schools, we can make a bigger impact. No, I think that's great because when I think back to my experience, but also what I hear you saying now, those schools are probably the ones most likely to have a greater degree of single parent homes. Exactly. Uh, maybe blue collar homes. Right. Um, so the opportunity for a role model, I'm sure you've got a great story about from a, from a volunteer or a role model, right? That's been in the classroom. Right. Do you have a story? To- I do. Well, so let me, let me tell you one story. So uh, a colleague of mine, was going through the dollar store and she had stopped to buy, she was doing something at her church that evening and she was buying plates and cups and stuff and she, kind of in a hurry. And uh, she had her name tag on. And the student goes, Junior Achievement, do you work at Junior Achievement? And she said, well, yes, I do. And she, he looked at her, he said, Junior Achievement changed my life. Oh my. So, you know, goosebumps, right? And so she gave him her card and she said, I'll be back. I want to hear more about your story. Come to find out that this student had gone to a one day AT&T job shadow. He had never been downtown Dallas. He went into the AT&T building, their world headquarters here in Dallas, and spent a day learning how getting a degree degree in technology, he could make a difference in his life. So when my coworker met him, he was working his way. He had graduated from community college and was going to go to UT Arlington and to get a degree in business and technology. Changed my life. You changed my life. That's incredible. How, you know, so as a student, I mean, we hear those stories from time to time. Um, we also had a volunteer that was in the classroom. And so uh, she had gone into the classroom and she had a group of students and she had this one student who she thought was a boy. I mean, the hair was slicked back. And in this day and age, sometimes you don't know, right? Because the clothes are pretty mm-hmm. uh, androgynous and they just, they just are what they are. But she said, well, what's your, give him his name tag. And everybody laughed. And she felt bad, and she went to the student. She said, I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I didn't know you were a girl. And that little girl looked at her and said, I just don't want anybody to see me. And she looked her in the eye, and she said, but you deserve to be seen. The next week when she came back, the little girl was dressed like a little girl. And she went up to her teacher afterwards, and she said, I just want to thank you for taking time to say that to me. Now, We go through life not thinking about these things. You know, we're busy raising our own children, our grandchildren, and those kids just want to be seen. I think back to, and those are two great stories, so thanks for sharing those. I also think that often, from my own experience volunteering, the volunteers come away with stories, right? It changes the way they think and appreciate what's going on with Junior Achievement. Can you talk about... Where do the volunteers come from? Who are they? What do they look like? And, and what do they do in the classroom, actually? Like well, they I, look like you. Okay. Because <laughs> it sounds intimidating to many, right? It can it be does. intimidating. I've got to teach kindergartners or fifth graders. So talk more about the volunteer experience. My first class was second grade, and I was sweating. I know I was. So we, we partner with a lot of companies, and that could be big corporate partners and small businesses, because... We really are a business organization. We're teaching business skills. So we, 80% of our volunteers are from businesses, okay. large or small. And the other 20% are either community volunteers. We might get a rotary that wants to come volunteer, or it might be a parent 
or it might be a grandparent or somebody who just wants to be to continue to be active in school after their children are gone. So we'll take anybody that wants to volunteer. We've got some people that call in and say, hey, if you need some more people at J Finance Park this week, just call me, let me know. So we have volunteers all over. We have a wonderful, diverse group of volunteers. I mean, we have every ethnicity. We have every, we volunteers from every city around the Metroplex, uh, just a wonderful variety. So it really makes me feel good that when we go into the schools, we offer that diversity to those students. No, that's fantastic. And uh, let me go back to something I think I heard you say earlier about the board of Dallas and your community gets to help you decide how to deliver the curriculum. Right. Because I've heard you talk today about you can go into the classroom for a day. I think you just mentioned Finance Park. Right. But I think there's also a biz town and, yes. and other ways. So can you describe maybe for the audience a little bit the right. different ways Junior Achievement uh, comes to life right. for different kids of different ages? It's really great. So if you want to go and so we have lots of delivery models. So our classroom model, we might have a company that goes and does a JA in a day. So they visit K through five and it's kind of a team building concept too. And so they meet for breakfast. They get to meet the kids, meet the principal. They go to their classroom, deliver all five lessons and they're gone by one thirty. So yep. it's a half a day of work. Really? You could continue and go work if you're not too tired after teaching, which we find that we usually are. Uh, another delivery model, which I choose to do, is I go to one, I go to the school once a week for five or six weeks. Okay. And that way, it, that's what we just call the standard delivery. It works better for my schedule once a week. And I schedule it with the teacher and I say, what time's your class? And you can come at nine o'clock or you can come at one o'clock and I choose and, and I do that. So for six weeks in a row, six weeks the teacher in a row. knows right. at nine o'clock every Tuesday, right. Jan's coming in to volunteer right. and talk to my class. And if something happens and I can't go, I either get a coworker to go or he says, oh, just we can miss this week and we'll just extend it a week. So they're very flexible. When you get into the high school classes, so it's a different volunteer, right? I, I personally would rather teach older students than younger students. But everybody's different, right? Mm -hmm. So when you get into the high school and you're teaching them finance and you're telling them about the mistakes that you made and the mistakes that your kids made, they come to life, right? Absolutely. I showed them the picture. My, my son didn't make very good choices when he went to college. And it came down to it. He had to buy, and this was in 2006, he had to buy a 1992 Chevelle. It's ugly. It's an ugly car. <laughs> so, you know, you get them... Because we've all made dumb mistakes, yeah, right? Of course. And so you can tell things about that. And that's what I like about high school students. But it is different. It's like once a week for so long that they get to elaborate know, on finance part. Because yes. as a parent myself, I often was in position over the years to say no to my kids. And sometimes I was met with a reaction of like, well, why not? It's just a new pair of shoes or something. Right. So talk about Finance Park and what the what fifth, sixth graders get to do when they come to Finance Park. Right. So the students that come to Finance Park are actually junior high and high school. Okay. And so there is a junior high curriculum, and the high school curriculum is called Real World. So they take 12 class, they take 12 lessons in the classroom. They come to the Capstone Experience. It's an it's a five-hour session of budgeting. So they receive a persona. So you might be a single mom making thirty-five thousand dollars and you have two children, or you might be single and not um, have any children, but be an engineer and make $80,000, right? Mm -hmm. And the students sit at a table, so they see everybody else and how much money that they make, right? So they go, well, I'm, why aren't, he's making 80000 I want to make 80000 So you say, well, that's, he went to college, and you didn't. And, you know, you, you got a high school degree, but he went to college. So it kind of helps them see things. Yep. Then they have to budget in 23 areas. And that's where you get the aha moments because they go, whoa, I didn't know the phone was so expensive. Right. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of things and they have to they have to put some money into savings. They have to uh, add to their that to pay off college loans if they went to college. Mm -hmm. They have a credit score. They either can purchase a car or they had to take public transportation. They can purchase a house or they have to rent. So you get a lot of aha moments and they really see how 
a $50,000 a year job isn't as much as they think it is because it sounds like a lot of money when you're Mm -hmm. in high school. But more important than that, so from the students who went through JA Finance Park, 25% of those students after the class said, I really see how if I have a problem, I can focus on it and I can solve it. Right? And that's what you want kids to do. That's a life attribute. That's a life skill. That's a life skill. Um, The other... There was 85% of it said they realized they didn't know how to manage money, but they had confidence now that they could raise their money. 85%. That's incredible. Wouldn't it be awesome if all the students were able to take it? And then um, 90% said they would refer it to a friend. High school students? That's impressive. 90%? Yep. So. I think those age groups that you're describing are so important because... Kids can make decisions throughout that of school. Um, and if some of the research, I think, if I remember correctly, shows that when they're 13, 14, 15, they're thinking about dropping out of school or not. Right. And so I think Finance Park and getting that middle school, that early high school age, if you can get them that role model I heard you describe, if right. you can get them hooked on yes. the benefit of a college degree, they're not going to drop out, right? They want to see the relevance. Right. They want to see how math how science, all this stuff is relevant. So if you can get people to come in, engineers, doctors, whomever, and talk about their their career path. One of our newest programs now is um, career speaker series. And we just get people from any career, it doesn't matter what. And you go in and you talk to them for an hour and you just tell them what you did, where you, what you studied in college, what you did after college, then how you started your business, right? And so it just gets them to think outside the box and think of something different. Think of what I might be able to become. No, I think that's right. One of the incredible stories I, I've, I've thought about for a decade since I first heard it was there was a uh, Caucasian businessman in the classroom. He was a banker. Uh-huh. And he was predominantly teaching the curriculum to a uh, a Hispanic, a African-American uh, group of students in the school. Sure. And he realized that after the first week. So the next week, he brought back his colleague from the bank, who was an African-American man in a suit and tie. Awesome. And he could see the eyes of the children all of a sudden realize, oh, I could be like him, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't always associate with this guy, but this this he looks like me. I could right. look like him someday, right? So that role model connection is so amazing. It really is. Yep. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. Well, I think you mentioned earlier about the life changing. I think back to some of the events that you've had. I think you mentioned this uh, different events uh, like bowling becomes a team building. Right. But you also do this incredible black tie event every year. Yes. Talk about that for a few minutes because it's not just about laureates and engagement and fundraising, but also scholarships. Right. So talk about that for a minute if you would. Right. So um, the event you're talking about is the Dallas Business Hall of Fame. And it's conducted every year in the spring. And we honor three or four business people. And they may be living or they may have, they may be deceased. And we honor them for what they've done for the community. What they've done as far as entrepreneurs or if they're a CEO that maybe is based in Dallas, for their company based in Dallas, their leadership and what that company has done for the city. We uh, also look at people who are very philanthropic and maybe what they have done. So we have a great variety of different people who've been honored. This year our event is March 29th. Excuse me, February 29th on leap day. (laughs) (laughs) February 29th, it's it's all consuming now. Uh, We are honoring Melissa Rife from the Container Store, John Scoble from Woodbine Development, and Kelsey Warren from Energy Transfer. So we have a diverse group and we're excited to honor them this year. We'll have students that will be their escorts. We will have students there that night that will that have come from classes we've taught and they're going to tell us what they've learned. And you never know. Sometimes you get really something different. You yeah. never really know. Sometimes you they just say what they want to say because that's how kids are. But you get to see how this all comes together. It is our one big fundraising event and we put a lot of effort to it. Uh, we have a silent auction, we have a live auction, and it's just going to be a tremendous evening to celebrate not only the laureates, but the students, and really look at how we are making an impact in Dallas. No, that's fantastic. Uh, 
I want to go back to one thing as well, because I, when I think about the bowling, which is a fundraising, yes. and for the companies who right. are involved in engagement, right. the, the Black Tie event, the right. Dallas Hall of Fame. Talk a bit more about the makeup of your board a little bit to bring right. to life, because I think you mentioned AT&T earlier, a right. uh, longtime supporter. What's the makeup of your board and where, where do all these volunteers come from? Right. And what's that look like? So our board company, so it, when you were on the board, we asked you to provide volunteers, right? Because mm-hmm. that's part of being a part of the board. So we've got AT&T, Bank of America, Toyota, um, I'm going to leave people out, PepsiCo, American Airlines. So we've got all these companies, and they bring volunteers into the classroom. And we also ask them to help us provide money through their companies, whether it's bowling or providing a grant. And that could be educational or marketing because mm-hmm. we've got those opportunities. So we have board, We have about 40 board members from different companies. Uh, they represent... We've got a diverse board. We've got people from all different companies, different industries. Uh, We have probably five or six banks because we're a financial organization. Mm -hmm. But we also have other companies. And we have a lot of volunteer partners that don't have any board members. But uh, the board is really our governance. And they are a fiduciary board. And they guide what we do. They make decisions that really uh, chart our course. If I think back... I think the elevator speech is junior achievement needs three things. You need a curriculum for the students, right? right which you have a foundation there. Right. You need money to run the organization right. and you need volunteers, right? Is that right. fair? Is that still fair today to say yep. those are kind of the three things? Those are the three things. It sounds like the student demand is there. Student demand is, yes, very high. Yep. So, so, so tell the audience if they want to get involved. Yes. What are ways they can contact you? How can people get involved if they don't know how to do that today? Yeah. So really the best way is through our website and it's jadallas.org and there's contact information there. It's, it's pretty clear to follow or you can call our office and um, we can help like however you want to volunteer, however you want to get involved, we'll find a place for you. No, I, I think that's great. Um, what haven't we talked about? Uh, we've covered so many bases today in the last you know, 25 minutes or so. I love, I love your passion for the organization because you weren't just seven and a half years in Dallas. You've got a career that goes back even further with Junior Achievement as well, right? right? I was in Kansas City. So totally, so total time, it'll be 10 years next month. And how big a staff do you have? Because I don't think as a 501c3 that you have this massive organization, right? You run on a pretty small team, right? Yep. So we have 18 full-time staff. Um, And then we have some part-time staff that run our capstone programs. Um, We have about 5,000 volunteers this year to manage. So everybody has a piece in that, right? And we're always, everywhere we go, we're asking people if they could volunteer or if they can financially support us. No, uh, thank you. I think that's a a great way to transition towards uh, the end of our conversation here today. You've been an amazing guest. Thank you. You know that I've been been passionate for Junior Achievement for a lot of years, so I'm so glad that you came on today. So as we wrap up, um, I hope that each of you has seen a bit more perspective of the gift that Junior Achievement is bringing to our children. Your children, if you're in Dallas or across the globe, Junior Achievement really is making a difference in the lives of our students, kindergarten through 12, setting a path towards entrepreneurism and financial literacy. And you think of all the topics we talk with our kids about today. Those two, getting them a path forward in life are so critical. We talked about the STEM, the importance of science and math and all the things that uh, Junior Achievement brings to life. And they're doing it in cooperation with our schools. So thank you for joining us today. I hope you've seen a great example of another gift that is being shared in our communities. And I just challenge you as we wrap up, each of you too has a gift. And maybe that gift is with Junior Achievement. Maybe that gift is something else. But I challenge you to find it and go share it with the world. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.